Hello again and welcome back to the channel. This is Michael from TOEFLresources.com. Today I'm happy to share the 2024 version of my guide to TOEFL writing question one, also known as the integrated essay. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a sample question and I'll walk you through how to answer that question with a complete essay. I'll talk a little bit about how to take notes. I'll give you an essay template you can use on test day. And I'll talk about some topics that come up frequently in this part of the test. And if you stick around all the way to the end, talk about how you can get a free essay evaluation from me. So let's get started by talking about the basics. How is this question designed? Well, here's how it works. First up, you'll have three minutes to read an article about an academic topic. It'll be about 250 or 300 words. After that, the article will disappear and you'll have two minutes to listen to a lecture on the same topic. Then you'll have 20 minutes to write an essay using details from both of the sources. Now keep in mind that you can only hear the lecture one time, but the reading will be visible as you write your essay. You can always see the reading. That's pretty cool. Now you really have to remember what the relationship is between the reading and the lecture because it never really changes. There's just three possibilities basically. First up, you could get one where the article presents an argument and the lecturer challenges the argument. That's probably the most common, pretty straightforward. Next, you could get a question where the article describes a problem and the lecturer gives solutions to the problem. Finally, you could get the opposite of that, where the article describes solutions to some problem and the lecturer challenges them. So you can probably see here that the relationship is always sort of adversarial. They always have kind of opposing opinions. Uh, there's never really one where the article presents an argument and then the lecturer agrees with that argument or expands on it. That's not on the test. So here's a few samples. You could get one where the article says that colonizing asteroids is a great idea, but then the lecturer is gonna come on and say, no, 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 colonizing asteroids is not a good idea. Or you could get one where the article says, oh no, there's a big problem. All the peregrine falcons are dying. And then the lecturer comes on and says, well, we've got some solutions to this problem. Lastly, you could get one where it's like, uh, the, the article says, oh, the olive trees are dying, but here are some methods to protect them. And then the lecturer gets on and says, nah, those methods aren't going to work. Here's why. So it's always, uh, it's always adversarial. They, they have opposing views. All right. So with that said, let's get right into a sample question. So on the screen now is a sample reading. I'm not going to read it all out loud, but you can pause the video and check it out if you want. But I will draw your attention to a few things. Here's how it's structured. At the beginning, you're gonna get like an introductory paragraph where the author gives his main thesis. So in this case, the main thesis is that volcanic rock is an excellent source of building material. Uh, and you know, we should make buildings out of it, okay. And then after that, there's three supporting arguments. So first up, he says, oh, volcanic rock is very durable. And there's a whole paragraph about its durability. And then his second supporting reason, oh, it's an excellent source of natural insulation. And there's a whole paragraph about that. And then finally, he says, oh, it's also got environmental benefits. And there's a whole paragraph about that. And this is how the reading is always structured. There's an introduction with the main point and then one, two, three supporting arguments. I really want you to remember this because understanding the structure of the reading and the lecture is key. If you understand the structure, you'll have a much easier time writing your essay because it never really changes. On the screen here now is a lecture transcript. I'm not going to read it out loud, but again, pause the video if you want to check it out. But here's how it works. First up, the lecturer begins with his own introduction where he states his own main point. And he's going to state in this case, oh, you know, volcanic rocks, maybe it's not such a good building material and we're going to look at the reasons why. So it's the opposite opinion. And then that, again, one after another, he's going to talk about why it's not good. But watch this. The first thing he talks about is the durability. 
Remember, that was the first point in the reading, durability. So in the lecture, he's going to talk about why it's not so durable. He's going to talk about how it's brittle and that earthquakes can destroy it and that it's better to use concrete or other modern materials. And then his second point, it's going to be about the insulation. He's going to say, ah, oh, it's, it's not so good for insulation. The temperatures fluctuate and it's better to use foam or fiberglass. And then his third point is about the environmental benefits. He's saying, well, the environmental benefits are not as clear. Uh, it can have impacts on the local ecology and the landscape, blah, blah. So you can see how the lecture has a mirror structure to the reading. It has, it has its main point, which is the opposite of the reading's main point. And then it has three supporting arguments, which directly challenge the three supporting arguments in the reading. And they're in the same order. Now, one of the questions I get here usually is, how much detail should I include in my essay? Well, the answer is as much as possible, right? Ideally, you'll include just about everything. Now, I know that's not always possible, but as you practice taking notes and as you practice writing essays, try to include more and more in your essay and you'll get a higher score. After the lecture goes away, you get the question. And the question is going to look something like this. Summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they oppose specific points made in the reading passage. And then you write your essay. Now, in terms of note-taking, you can see my notes on the screen. I've set up my page with an R for reading and an L for lecture. And when I'm reading the article, I'm taking a few notes. Now, some people don't take any notes from the reading because you can see the reading as you're writing your essay. But for me, like a lot of like youngish people, it's very hard to focus for three minutes and really read something without my mind wandering. So I find that if I take a few basic notes as I'm reading, I can remain focused on the article and I can use that time a little better. And then, you know, I've just got point one, point two, point three. And then when the listening comes on, I have these arrows to match up point one from the reading with point one from the listening. And then I get as many notes as I can. And I'm using short forms like X for to represent something bad or something that doesn't exist. So X earthquakes, it's, it's, they're hurt in earthquakes. And I write X environmentally friendly to say it's not environmentally friendly. I don't have a ton of listening notes. When I'm writing the essays, a lot of it will come from my memory. Um, for some people, though, they like to have longer notes and they'll take more notes about the listening. That's something you'll want to experiment with as you prepare for the test. See how detailed your notes must be in order for you to write a good essay. Um, in terms of writing the essay, here's a basic template I've created. Everyone likes to have a template for this essay, so I've put one together here. There's not much to it. I'm going to show you an example essay that uses it in just a moment. But basically, I've got a template which introduces the, uh, the topic, which I'll fill in by talking about volcanic rocks and building materials. Then I've got a template for the first body paragraph, a template for the second body paragraph, and a template for the third body paragraph. I recommend that you experiment with this and you change it as necessary. If you don't like any of my verbs, you can put in a new verb. Instead of claims, you can put in argues. You know what I mean. Change it up. Make it your own. Get comfortable with it. Here's a sample essay based on the template and based on this question. You can see with yellow that the template is, you know, it occupies a fair amount of the essay. Um, but, you know, I start by using it. The reading and the lecture are both about using volcanic rock to construct homes. While the author of the reading feels that there are some advantages of this building technique, the lecturer challenges the author's ideas. He does not believe that volcanic rock is a particularly useful building material. I won't read the body paragraphs, but you get the point. I've just filled in, uh, filled in the template with all of the details from the notes, from the article, and from my memory. And you can see, again, my essay has the same structure as the reading and the lecture. I have my main point, 
And then the first body paragraph is about the first detail from the reading and the lecture. So it's going to be about the durability. My second body paragraph is about the second detail from the reading and the lecture. And that's about insulation. My third body paragraph is about the third detail from the reading and the lecture. And that is the environmentally friendly stuff. And the structure of the body paragraphs, first the reading, then the listening. First the reading, then the listening. First the reading, then the listening. Some people do like to reverse this. They start each body paragraph with the listening and then they conclude with the reading. I find that very weird and awkward and it leads to a lot of problems in the student essays that I check. So I strongly recommend that you start with the reading and the listening second. And in fact, that's what ETS recommends these days in the, uh, the official TOEFL preparation course. All right, so that's the essay. Um, if you have any questions about how I put that one together, leave a comment down below. I just want to conclude the video by talking about uh, some of the most frequent topics that show up on the test. Based on my experience, these are the, the most frequent topics. First up, you might get one about some historical event or figure from the past. You know, something like why some historical event occurred. I made a question about why did so many civilizations collapse during the late Bronze Age? Or why was Machu Picchu created? They also really like questions with like animals, plants, and dinosaurs. You know, like it could be like, you know, solutions to the problem of the peregrine falcon all dying off, right? Or solutions to the problem of olive trees uh, getting a disease in Greece. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs, they love dinosaurs. Questions about, you know, whether such and such dinosaur uh, could fly, you know, things like that. Environmental topics are very common. You know, things about climate change or, you know, pollution or, you know, something like whether coal should be used to generate energy because of the pollution. And science and technology, also very common. Things like whether or not it's possible to have uh, a city on the moon or Mars or on Venus. You might get something that's outside of these topics. The integrated writing section of the test probably has the broadest range of topics, even more broad than the reading section and the listening section, I think. So be prepared for anything. As you're practicing, make sure these topics are well represented in your practice materials. All right, I'm going to kind of wrap up the video with a few last minute tips that are based on what I see in the student essays I check every day. First up, don't write a long introduction. Keep it very short. Some people really try to shove in a lot of details into their introduction. They'll specifically mention all of the supporting arguments there. I don't think that's necessary. I think you should keep it pretty brief. And while we're on the topic, don't include a conclusion. You don't need one. Next up, I want you to paraphrase the reading. Don't copy it word for word. Paraphrase it. I mean, don't go wild and paraphrase it like completely. Just do a slight paraphrase. Change a few words. Kind of change the way the sentences are structured. Just don't overdo it. As far as the listening goes, I think it's okay to really copy the listening. If you can, right? If it's in your memory, you can copy the listening. That's fine. I recommend writing about 280 to 300 words in total. Yes, that is longer than the typical length that ETS mentions, but I think it's a good idea. You want to go a little bit long here. As far as the body paragraphs go, you know, I recommend about 40% of the content in each paragraph being about the reading and then about 60% being from the listening. So you, you want to emphasize the listening a little bit. I want you to always use official practice resources if you can. There are a lot of really inaccurate practice questions out there, so I do recommend using ETS stuff if possible. That includes the official books from ETS and the TOEFL Test Ready website from ETS. And last but not least, I want you to save about one minute for proofreading, maybe even two. When I check student essays, there's always a lot of like really tiny kind of like mistakes that they totally could have fixed in the proofreading stage. So keep that in mind. All right, so if you want a free evaluation of one of your practice essays, here's how you do it. I want you to pick a sample question at tofelresources.com. I'll put a hot link in the, 
video description down below. You can write the essay based on that question and post it in the comments. Uh, and while you're at it, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel, whatever. And then I will read your essay and I will estimate how it would score. And I'll give you a few tips on how you might do better next time. If you want more of this kind of stuff, you can check me out, of course, at tofuresources.com where you can find guides to every section of the test. And you can sign up to have me give you detailed evaluations of your essays. If you pay a small fee, I will go through your practice essays line by line. I'll fix all of your mistakes and I will put in a bunch of inline comments describing what you could do better next time to get a higher score. All right, it's been fun as always. I am going to leave it at that, but I'll put up a video about TOEFL writing question two in the next few weeks, I hope. So uh, keep an eye on the channel for that. Take care. I will talk to you all later.